And welcome everyone to a Scouts of Entertainment Reforged Replay at the Outpost. Today's replay comes from Joran. Now before we get started, if you'd like to see me through other Reforged Replays like this, or other Total War replays like Rise of Mordor, Rome 2, Warhammer 2, just to name a few, there are links displayed in your screen, and also in the description below. You can also post replays to my Discord at Scouts for Reconnaissance. A link to that Discord will also be in the description below. I also have a PayPal option, subscribe to Patreon, or stream as donation link if you like to support my work. It does help the channel. But there are also other ways of supporting by smashing the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, tick that bell for notifications, and leave your own thoughts about this battle in the comment section below. I'd also quickly like to highlight that 60% of my viewers are currently unsubscribed at the moment, so if I got any of your subscription today, that'd be awesome. And with that, let's jump into it. So, Joran's one of three defenders today, and he's commanding the realm of Numenor. And we have some Numenorean court here, to about uh, three units I can maybe see there. Got some Seafarers and Endemos, a decent Javelin melee unit mid tier. We got some more, maybe four units of Numenorean cohort there. We got some Numenorean shield guard, looks to be four units of them, maybe, even five. No, I'm going to say four. We have two units of Numenorean steel bows. We have some Pharisim Swordmasters, definitely. We have some Royal Legion of our Manalos. We also have some Naru and Naru Royal Guard, Belega Pikin, and Naru and Naru Sentinels. There's the Sword Masters right there. We also have some Pharisim Nobles. And that brings us to his first ally, Umbar, commanded by Morris. Who has some Belega Archers here, a Catapult. We've also got some Naru and Naru Sentinels, along with some Alcorandas Legion. And we have some Belga Shield Bearers in here too. And some Dunium Shield Guard, if I didn't point that out earlier. It's actually quite a bit in that bunch. We'll see if we can see anything else later. We have some... Well, I think I saw some Belicath Marksmen in there too. We see some Belicath Axe Guard here. Looks to be uh, armored up, I'm thinking. We have some Ardunian Shield Guard. We also have some Belicath Pikemen here. Two units. And some Naru Unaru Royal Guard. So Naru Unaru Reunion over here. We have Warlords of Umbar. Belicath Axe Guard. Corset Black Guards. Harbingers of Casimir. And I'll keep an eye out for Casimir's Rangers. He might have two units of Corsair Black Guards, I'm not exactly sure. Belica Shield Bearers. And that's all I can really tell from that at the moment. And with that, we go to the final defender today. Which is Lothorian, committed by Joey Wan Kenobi. We have seen before, but not in a little while. In any case, we have some Kindred of the Calibre in here. We have some Woodland Protectors, two units. Some Lauren and Spearman over here. We've got some Lauren and Archers next, two units. Actually, maybe even three. We have four, actually. Damn. I think that's actually four units of Lauren and Archers right here. Don't usually see four. We have some Karas Kalan Guardians. Don't usually see two either. In any case, Lauren and Spearman, Lauren and Mounted Company, Lauren and Swordmasters. Looks to be four units of Swordmasters here. I don't see any Watchers of the Golden Wood. Which is highly unusual, considering they are the most accurate unit in the game. Kindred of the Calibre makes sense, but I am surprised they're not seeing any Watchers of the Golden Wood or Riders of the Golden Wood, but we might see Riders later, they could be hidden. And so we'll go to the first of five attackers today. Which is Cardolan, commanded by no stranger to Reforged, the Steward of Dale. Who has some Wardens of Turn, got that? Some Dunedain Captains. Some Mercenary Guildsmen, two units. We have some Minhirith Men at Arms. Three units. We have some Greenway Garrison Spearmen. Two units. Some Hearthguard Roman Sul. Tharbad Riders. And I expect to see some Sharpshooters and Mentor Roman Gatekeepers also, but you know, keep an eye out for them later. Moving on. We have. Uh, sorry, we have Khan. Lost my voice there for a second. We have some Brotherhood of the Spear. Nurad Stormguard. Nurad Footmen here. Four units. We have some Nurad Halberds. Three units. Actually, no, my bad. No, three units, yeah. We have some pneumatic warriors. Three units there. This is just your IT, IT infantry troop. We have some pneumatic infantry. No, uh, light to mid tier archer unit. We have some very bowmen here, definitely mid tier. Two units there. And again, we'll keep an eye out for hidden units, but I'm not sure if that's it. Looks a little bit small, we'll see. Next, we have Dwarves of Erebor, commanded by Verorax. We have some Erebor Legionnaires here, two units. Two units of Axe Guard of Erebor. Some Dragon Sayers Ered Mithrin, Highborns of Erebor. Ironfoot Spears, Ironfoot Warriors, three units. 
some iron foot crossbows here, two units, iron foot spears, iron foot halberds, iron foot warriors, and some iron foot spears. No, um, no backlock engineers. But, you know, I've seen that in a couple of replays of late. People haven't bought the black locks. So people feel like they can win without them, which is good to see. We have some, we have Isengard next, committed by Average Trash. I don't think I've seen before, so if you knew Average, welcome to Reforged. We have some Urukai crossbows here. Urukai archers, uh, two units, and some Urukai crossbows. Next we have Dunedin clansmen here, two units. Urukai reavers, Dunedin veterans, and Urukai infantry here, uh, four units. Urukai pikemen, three units. Nazgah high, trolls of the white hand, and Urukai berserkers. Finally, we have rune. Commanded by the Mark of the Night. We have Dragon's Breath Cannon here. We have Loak Flag Rim. Two units of Loak Scion Rim. Some Wind Run, so Wind, so Wayne Riders of Rune. Got there in the end. Two units of Loak Gamp Rim. We have some Kamuls Chosen. We've got some hidden units here which aren't showing up, obviously. And that's all I can see there. So we'll get this replay started, guys. Enjoy. And I'm sorry, but average, what kind of name is average trash? If, if I say average or if I say your performance is average, is it an insult or am I just addressing you by name? This is going to get confusing. Okay. Um, we'll do a small cutty, guys, and we'll come back soon. Okay, guys, we're back briefly. I see some Eastron crossbowmen, maybe one or two units armored up all the way. And some it's Kamul Shadow Guard. Might see some Kamul Shadow Bows. Not sure exactly. We got some. Uh, I was actually keeping an eye out for Snaga skirmishes, but I don't see any actually yet. Um, Average sent up some Dunedin clansmen to try and bait the enemy into shooting him, but um, so far the defenders are not taking the bait. Now, if I was Joran, I'd actually just charge in my Pharaohs and Nobles straight into the Dunedin clansmen and just wipe them out. I mean, Pharaohs and Nobles can do away with Dunedin clansmen with ease, and you know, that way you won't tire out your infantry whatsoever, you'll sustain almost. Well, you sustain no casualties, and you just deal. You just get rid of all those light tiered troops, and here he goes. Okay, he's brought up his Orkai archers. Okay, they got hit, but um, no kills yet. So one forty-one. So they took out fifty men in that charge alone. Be tempted to come back for another one. Even with the Urukai archers there. The Urukai archers are firing. Yeah, they're going in again. Oh, they pulled out again. The shield guard's going in, probably have to get it in the shield wall formation. Just so I can get in closer to the frontline combat, and if there are arrows coming in, but also do less damage in shield wall formation. Now, what have we got over here? We've got a bit of a battle going on over here. We've got the Wind Raiders. Wayne Riders, sorry. Wayne Riders, jeez, I can't even say Wayne Riders very effectively. Um, 24, full unit. Taking out pretty much all the line mounted company, so it's a little bit unfortunate. They've got some kills here of the Eastron crossbows. But it looks like most of the, most of like, sorry, it looks like the Sarmory managed to actually protect most of the Eastron crossbows. Get my words in order here. It's embarrassing. Okay, only clansmen still battling away here. 101. New range steel bows. Yeah, probably can shoot at the iron for crossbow. And Joran's going after him. And down to 75. And they were in steel bows. Proving to be very, very accurate here. Riverax is not going to have many dwarves left at this rate. They're taking out almost 20 of volley. Now 
it was decent work. Yeah, average is trying to drive him back, but um, troops up here tend to do pretty well against enemy troops down below. I mean, the high ground definitely provides some protection. The Iron for Warriors moving up. Things will get a little bit more difficult for Joran once these guys get into the get into the fight. Yeah. He's moving up, he's done with veterans. 34 crossbows left alive. I was trying to find the other unit of um Iron for Crossbows, but I can't see them at the moment. Well, Seafarers probably should be pulled back, but I think a pikeman needs to just turn around, kill these guys, and then break them, and just come back after that. Like, Joran's simply got them like this, is to use the hill for protection against enemy air fire. He probably wants... Viverax to send him more to wars before he uses his seafarers, and that makes a lot of sense. Don't know what Morris is planning to do with his Belgar archers. Except maybe shoot at the Urukai archers, but that's about it. Pharaohs and rebels, I don't think they've lost a single soldier yet. Vivarax is just stationing his forces, getting ready. Meven. Sorry, Meven, I don't think I actually said your name before when I called out your arm. I just said Khan before. So yeah, Meven is commanding Khan. I don't think I've seen Meven before, so if you're new to reforge Meven, welcome. Okay, Lord and Arch is firing in, but they're shooting him. Casualties here for Joey. And very bad down to 81, 81. So down from 108. Uh, well, Joey's got a couple of arts units up here, just ready and waiting. This is the ideal location, I think, for his archers. But it, you might think about just stationing a couple of archer units in the center here, and maybe send them to Joran's location or Morris's, depending upon the um, level of attack on each one. Like I think Joey's, I think um, Joey's going to be fine. I think Morris is going to be okay. I think the attackers are going to just really concentrate their efforts on Joran's choke point. Guys and levels. We'll see how well they do here. And, uh, that was that wasn't the best charge there for them. He needs some axe throwers. I think. Good old Vivarax. All right, so crossbow is 93. So the steel bows did all that in less than a minute. I'll make a mental note of that for the future. Now, I was going to say the attackers are wasting some ammunition, but they are getting some good shots on the seafarers, so maybe halt all other archer units except for the one that's shooting at the seafarers and Indemos. Because they're pretty much wasting, every other archer unit is pretty much wasting their ammunition.
Okay, so Joey pulled off his answers, but he's got no other ones firing in. Oh no. But the Kindred of Calibor firing in. He's trying to take out Carlin's javelins. And I hear Dragon's Breath Cannon there. Yeah, Morris's catapults. I think they might better serve Joran than himself. And that Dragon's Breath Cannon could easily take out these catapults. There we go. Very lucky. He might get out of there. Okay, Urukari was broke. Well, your archers. How many have a shot? Now he's wasting all his ammunition there. This is where the crossbows could come in handy if you had them nearby. says that prematurely. Alright, so we've got out here got some Urukai Reavers. Okay. I half thought they were Urukai Berserkers, in which case I was kind of hoping you'd fire on them, but they're just Reavers. We've got Urukai Crossbows, I think they're out of range. Eiffel Crossbows, however, are well within range, so he can move up his Belgar Isis to try and take him out. Joran's already moved up his Steel Bows. I don't know if this is his second unit or the original unit, because you don't have too many volleys here. Of your steel bows, so you gotta pick your targets wisely. And you know, so far he's done that. But being this far away from the ledge and given where the target is, he's gotta be careful. Yeah, so that's why he's moving it forward again. Okay, Urukai crossbows are shooting in, that's why they're so accurate. Crossbows are far more accurate than archers. Who will he shoot at? The walls? No. Nah. He's targeting the Eiffel crossbows. Okay, now. Yeah. This is unintentional, but average trash is actually gonna protect the high foot crossbows here a little bit. And they could be out of ammunition. Okay, how's all Thorian doing? They sallied out a little bit against Khan and Cardinal. Very bummer though, firing in. The elves do have decent armor, but there is a lot of arrows coming in. Kindred the Kelpon can really help out here with this block. Get some fire in the backs of the Kelpon forces, a few volleys. Maybe try and fire at the Kelpon and Karnish archers. Try and just um, provide some cover for your own infantry. The elevation of the hill makes it easier for the enemy forces to shoot at the elves here. So, that's one thing you've got to be careful about when you sally out like that. You've got to make sure that are your forces exposed? Are you marching downhill? Does the enemy have crossbows nearby? Those crossbows can lob their shots. And get additional hits here on the forces. 
unfortunately for Lothorian, I don't see any crossbows nearby. Khan still has a sizable arm. 15 to 20%. We still got about three units of archers here. And not one of them is being used. Yeah. Okay, ruins marched up. We've got no, no Royal Guard here taking on the Kamul Shadow Guard. I wonder if the Royal Guard managed to use up their arrows. Well, if any unit can kill the Royal Guard, it's the Kamul Shadow Guard for sure. And right now it looks like they're owning these guys. Wars are going to pull back and do an old charge. Okay, Umba is actually losing this fight. He's losing it big time. Of course, our back guard's moving up. We have, of course, that crossbow I didn't see before, but they've lost half their unit. And it looks like the Wayne Riders got into him. Okay, Joran's Pharaohs and Nobles are here. Look, this, this will throw the whole defense out of whack if Morris can't hold here. His back is up against the wall. Yeah, Balak of Axgard and, and um, geez, Belly of Pikemen. It's a great combination. It's proven to be very effective. But the Royal Guard's almost gone. In fact, it is gone now. Mark of the Knight needs to get these, these guys run around here, slam them straight into the back so the Battle of Axe Gun Pikemen, and those guys are gone. Now, Wallers of Umbar do not have a good charge where they are at the moment. But Rune will have to obviously need to consider that if he does try that strategy. He's on crossbows, though. It's open season for the East Ron Crossman. Morris has got to get his walls out of there. Oh, this should be a good charge. Oh, uh, someone got caught there. Okay, do you need a shield gun moving in? The um, Pharaohs and the Nobles go. They pull back or something. Well, the Dragon's Breath Cannon are not firing. Okay, yep. We committed the Shadow Guard once the Wars of Umbar were clear. We've got a Dune of Shadow Bows here from Joran. Why is he not firing these guys? I mean, look. The Kamul's chosen and his looks on room are lined up perfectly for you. He can save his right he can save Morris's right flank if he just fires right now. That was a that was missed, that was a big missed opportunity there. The catapult probably needs to be moved up a bit more. Right now the defense has this choke point covered. Lothorian going. Alright, so Stuart's moved up some more troops. Nevin's moved with him. I'm not seeing any commitment though from the Lorian Arsers just yet. I mean, you think they'd try to fire a few volleys from one unit just to relieve the pressure a little bit on the attack. I mean, these troops are getting tired. And there's still a lot more troops to deal with. You know, you gotta... You got Try and kill your enemies as quickly as you can and as fast as you can. Okay, he's firing, but these guys... I, mean, I think they're too far away. They've got to move closer to the ledge. Yeah, half the ammunition, at least. 
is going to the top of that ledge there. Same goes for this unit here. Joey just doesn't realize his archers are not shooting their targets. So, uh, a little bit painful. You can't just pick your targets, guys, and, and think your archers are going to shoot properly. You've got to make sure they're shooting right at all times. Your ammunition is always valuable. Especially for the elves, that's like your strength. Above other factions. Now, Carlin has the best, some of the best crossbows in the game, but it looks like Sierra Dale didn't bring any for some reason. I'm not saying he didn't yet, because I can't confirm that. Some good fight there from the bandits. We got Kindred Caliber on there, but they're not firing in. Probably the Brotherhood of the Shadows would be a decent target. Forty-five and forty-four. Bandits out of ammunition. Okay. It looks like Joey's caught on. This is good to see. Unfortunately, this unit looks like it's out of ammunition, or at least most of them are. That is still too far away. You got to get him right on the ledge. If you're going to shoot from a higher position like a cliff ledge, or a hill ledge, whatever this way, whatever you want to call this, you got to make sure they're right up against it. Right up against the ledge, just to make sure as many arrows clear that ledge as possible. Shooting back from cover, you might not get a single arrow across that ledge. Okay, good shot there from the catapult it seems. Holy oh, smokes, is that a... Oh no, he, he recalled those. I thought it was a mass ch chain out of a hundred dwarves. I thought, I thought that was unthinkable. Okay, have we seen more infantry? Have we seen more units in than that? And if your axe is doing that, you know, one or two units. Alright, Seafair has used up their javelins. You need shadow bows not firing just yet. We've got belly grass is firing. And we've got two units of course their crossbows firing. I think maybe they're targeting the leg game for him. The Dragon Spread can't fight point blank. Pray something changes in the course of battle. The defeat seems almost certain. Okay, Morris still has Corsair Blackguards with their javelins out, but they're being sent into the fight at the moment. Now Morris has got to move up his crossbows for sure. Just to just to target the Lok Nar Rim and either drive them back, you know? Either kill them or drive them back. Just provide his infantry some cover because it looks like they're like they're aiming some good shots on them. Now Mark still has some ammunition, it would seem, because he's trying to save his dragon's breath cannon. I like the room out of ammunition. He's coming for us. Ah, so I think Morris's credit they are. He's lucky. We've got no no roll guard here. Now the Adinian Shadowbows here. Is it time to fire? That's the question. Uh, it's iffy. Because you've got these Nimmer and Shield Guard out here. If he fires, I reckon he will kill those guys there. Along with the jar. The enemy are badly bloodied. 
They have lost half their men. Fifty-five to fifty-five, so dead even at this stage. Now this is a little bit unusual, but like as I sort of say every now and then, it's a common trait I see. People sending in their elites like mid to early to midway through the battle. Usually people usually see people commit their elites towards the end of the game, like the last 25% of the game. To use his elites like this is a big gamble because Vivrak still has his elites and Isengard still has his. If you use them too early, they'll sustain damage, they'll get tired, and when you go up against the elite troops of your enemy, they might collapse against them. And they could jeopardize your entire defense. This is a good jeopardize your entire attack. The other way around. You mean using units pretty much in any match, in any game, timing is everything. It's all about when you choose to use them. This is actually not good news here for Joram because he's almost fought his way through the entire entire battle. So he's almost fought his way through the entire sea of enemies. And now he's reached the end. And when he's done that, he's opened himself, he's opened himself up to the Yokai crossbow. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, well, Vivrax has tried to do it right. You know, he's tried to just attack the left flank to ensure as much of the enemy force is exposed to the, his allies crossbows as possible just to enable average to get as many kills as, or do as much damage as he can you know? so it's time to pull the Royal Legion out I'm not sure what Virax is trying to do here except run through Joran's men. If he can get his if he can get the um, Iron for Warriors behind them and attack them from the rear, then the crossbows can shoot them from behind, be sandwiched, the, the attackers can just sandwich the Royal Legion and crush them. But yeah, you see, Vivrax probably needs to pull back. The, the walls are just in the crossbows way. Crossbows can get getting good, good hits here on the left flank, but that's just because there's no the wolves here. Vivrax unfortunately getting a little bit in average trash's way. Trolls of the White Hand nearby. Seems like Mevis attack has failed. He's got some light that in. I don't know if he has his cannon or he definitely has his can somewhere because he can't see it. What's he hoping to accomplish by sending these trolls? Against all these guys, it's practically suicide. So these trolls will not last very long on their own. Defeat seems almost certain. They're already pretty bloody now. And they're starting to fall. And ultimately, they probably didn't get too many kills. Trolls are a great unit and they will serve you well, but you gotta protect them. You gotta make sure you got they've got support. I 
looks like the Olo Kai. Send the trolls in alone. They won't last too long. Not unless, there's other not unless there's other troll units with them. Because what that support does is it distracts your enemy. I mean, those enemy troops will target the supporting troops. And meanwhile, the trolls can get hits and do extra damage to, their, to your opponent. Kill as, many, kill as many as possible, do as much damage to your enemy as possible. All the more while their supporting unit is acting as a shield for your trolls. They're taking the damage, your trolls are getting the, your trolls are getting you the kills. You know. they're, doing, they're doing the damage that you need them to do. Move up in force. Seafarers. It's almost time to use these guys. Okay, there's the Dragon's Breath Cannon. Targeting the Royal Guard. Probably get him in loose from the head. Is Joran getting him in loose formation? Looks like he is. But um, I think he can fire in now. He yeah, didn't even shadow bows, so I don't know why these what these guys are waiting for. If they have their bows, if they have ammunition, they should fire in right now. I mean the dwarves are pretty bunched up. Zero will not be able to use these guys, the dwarves are too close to them. All the guys firing in. But not at the frontline troops. They're shooting at the axe cutter airport. Not a good idea. You deal with the immediate threat first to your own men. And I'll see if it's out of ammunition. Ah, the Union Shadow Bows must be out of ammunition. We sent them into the battle, so. Only half the enemy force remains! Hey, nice ricochet. It is 70 to 76. Okay, Nevin has had some success. I said Nevin before. Oh man. Mess that up. Mark of the Knights. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> I called you Nevin. Ah, oh, they all start with an M. I'm good. Guard here still has ammunition. Wooden protectors. Yeah, still has javelins. We've lost half of our men. Warren archers out of ammunition. What's he doing? Got some friendly fire though. I think maybe they're targeting the Urukai infantry. I'm seeing a lot of kills. Ok, 
Okay, trolls the right hand down to four. Again, fighting alone. And Joey Long Kenobi. Trying to use those javelins, you gotta make sure they're not, not under duress. Alright, Stuart Adele just lost his general. The Cobra Zerk is in the thick of things. They'll win that fight for sure. Now, I don't know if Boris had many shots left to this artillery, but I didn't see him use it that much. Okay, Arthur Crossbow is targeting the Arthur Spears. Choosing to target the Dragon's Breath artillery crew. 83 to 84. We got left here. Cars and Guardians 54 13. Doing a captain's wavering. Only half the enemy force remains. Yeah, it seems like the combined forces here of Joey Mon Kenobi and Joran seem to have depleted the forces of Khan pretty effectively. And Cardinal. That's better. Our ally lies dead. That's Without solid general, fire right there. Lose heart and flee. Morris General is unfortunately gone. And they're broken. Like that. So we've got the Nirad Storm Guard here. Devin should win that fight. And you gotta be careful too here guys. Sometimes with your pikes there is a glitch that makes them move backwards. Looks like some have turned around but others are sort of fighting from the back, you know? General lies slain upon the battlefield. Okay. We have two defending generals, I think, gone at the moment. I think Joran's is. Uh, Jor we just saw Joran's actually get killed. It's Joey One Kenobi's general that's still alive. That's the only defending general that's still alive. 92 to 88. Dragon Sword Dragon of Air and Mithrin down to 38. That's got high in the mix. Joe should be running these guys away, engaging the Nazca High with his unit that's already used its ammunition. Oh no. These guys here still have ammunition themselves. Huh. Our allies have fled the field like cowards. So this is the last unit Evan has in play. Behold how our cowardly foe runs. It's time to press the attack. I feel that Nazgul High went down then. Down 36 now. The enemy general lies dead. Alright, there goes Mevin's general. What have we got here? That's all Vivrax troops. Defeat seems almost certain. 
This is a little bit interesting. The Joe's Kindred of Caliborn over there. That's it. Kindred there, Arts is here. They're out of ammunition. I think they can win before any of their allies show up. Ninety-five to eighty-nine. All right. So it looks like we got Joey's men putting up a last stand here. I think Isengard will help Nevin survive. Okay, that was the Lothorian's general. I think we're about done, it's 100 to 92. Okay, so well done to the attackers on their victory. Joran getting 2,998. Morris, 1536. And Joey 1 Kenobi, 2,969. Studer Dale here, 444. Mevin, 626. Viverax, 1024. Average Trash, 735. And the Mark of the Night, 1446. Okay, Kill Can here. Steel Bows, 172, 100. Adidium Shadow Bows here, 190. Seafarers, Boss 164, 107. Narrow Narrow Sentinels, 117. Bellica Pump, 151. Royal Legion of Armadalos, 114. Numenor and Shield Guard, 307, 100, 109, 232. Numenor and Cohort, 143, 108, 161. And 280. And Farris and Nobles here, 293. So, who kill counts all around, ranging from average to excellent or outstanding. Um, criticism, so, for Joey would be to just... He wasn't keeping an eye on where his answers were shooting. And he wasted, unfortunately, a lot of his ammunition, he didn't waste it. But a lot of his ammunition got wasted because it just didn't clear that ledge. The ledge just seemed to catch most of the arrows he tried to fire into his opponent. So you always got to make sure you know where your archers are shooting, you know? Can't just assume, just because you selected a target, or they're firing, you're actually hitting their mark, you know? So you just got to watch out for that in the future. The attackers got off to a rough start there. They whittled down the defenders, and it just comes back to what I was talking about before, where timing is just everything. And unfortunately, it just wasn't with Joran and his team today, but, you know, it's always next time, guys. Thank you to Joran for sending in the replay. Well done to the attackers. This is Scouts of Entertainment signing off. Catch you guys in the next one.